Ah, there's nothing like getting back into the water for a dive after it's been a while. Sure, it's been a couple years, but it's like riding a bike, right? Well, that all sounds great until you're standing there next to your cylinder, BCD in one hand, regulator in the other, and you just don't know how to set up your gear properly anymore. All right, well, don't worry. In this video, I'll teach you how to set up your gear properly so you can remind yourself before your dive trip. That way you can save yourself some embarrassment on your actual trip itself. Let's get into it. All right, so here we have two standard aluminum 80 cylinders. We call them that here in the US because they contain 80 cubic feet of gas or 11 liters for the rest of the world. I also have a backplate and wing with a DIN regulator, as well as a more traditional jacket style BCD with a yoke regulator. I'll be demonstrating the setup for each of them, though they're pretty much the same. There are some design differences that I wanted to make sure I called out to show you. First, before you get anything hooked up, you're gonna to want to inspect your gear. Now, I have a whole video about gear maintenance that I'll leave up in the cards and in the description down below, and you can go in and refer to that to have a full complete guide to maintenance. But just as a few things to take a look at, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do a quick overview of any hoses that have any fraying at all or any type of tears or uh, gouges in say the rubber hose for the low pressure inflator. You're gonna to wanna to double check your BCD, especially the bladder for any type of tears or punctures or fraying or anything like that. And we'll do some additional checks once everything's hooked up just to make sure everything's working properly for us. You also wanna verify that your cylinder has been hydrostatic tested within the last five years and visually inspected within the last year. You can find the punch for the date of the last hydro on the cylinder itself. And then there's usually a sticker indicating the last time it was visually inspected or VIPT. Step two, inspect the O-ring. If you're diving with a yoke regulator, you're gonna check the O-ring on the cylinder itself by removing the dust cap and then taking a look at that O-ring inside there. If you're diving on DIN, the O-ring is actually on the regulator side and you're gonna to wanna to remove that dust cap by unscrewing it and then taking a look to ensure that that O-ring is in place and intact. You can keep the dust caps off of both your cylinders since we're about to use them and go ahead and attach them, but remember to not put the dust caps back on once you've used your cylinders. This is an international sign of a used tank uh, having the dust cap off, and if a dust cap is on, people might mistake the tank for being full, and I've seen that happen and cause an out of air issue, so please keep the dust cap off once you've used the tank, even if it's just for a single breath, um, you know, really something that we try to practice in the world of scuba diving. Now, when you're looking at these O-rings, you just wanna make sure there's no tears, cracks, or bulges in the O-rings themselves. And in general, they're just in good condition. You also wanna make sure they're laying completely flat and there's no folds in them or anything like that, whether it's within the cylinder itself or on the DIN regulator. Just make sure that that's smooth, flat, in good condition, no tears, no breaks, or anything like that. If it's not in good condition, this is where your save a dive kit comes into play. And I'll leave a link down in the description as well as up into the cards to my personal save a dive kit and the recommendations I have, including an O-ring kit that can save you for a bad O-ring in a case like this. Step three, place your BCD on the cylinder. Now it's time to place your BC on the cylinder itself. And when we loosen up these cam bands in the back to slide over the tank, we should try to wet them if possible, whether it's with a hose that's on the deck of the boat or actually dipping them in the water some. What happens when you wet a cam band is it can actually expand and stretch just a little bit and that can cause the tank to actually slip out on you. So wetting them first, just make sure that we have them as tight as possible on the tank and they won't continue to expand or stretch when they actually get underwater for you. Now, you wanna make sure that the opening valve of the tank itself or the cylinder is facing towards your BCD. As you would wear it, it should be facing towards your head. And the way I remember that is that's where the air comes out of. I want that air to go to my head. So it should be facing the back of the head or towards the inside of the BCD itself. I'll start with the jacket style BCD and then move on to the backplate and wing in just a moment. After loosening that cam band, go ahead and slide it over the cylinder itself. Again, ensuring the cylinder is facing the right way with the opening of the valve towards your head. Many jacket style BCDs have a second strap called a horse collar that's a little bit smaller usually, and that actually goes over the valve of the tank itself, the tank valve stem rather than over the entire tank. And this is kind of a redundant strap and it also helps the BCD from slipping too low for you as well. When adjusting the height of your BCD up and down the side of the tank, you basically wanna have the top of the tank valve and the top of the BCD 
pretty much in line with each other as a good starting point. And as you dive more and more and get used to your gear, sure, that tank valve might need to be a little bit higher or a little bit lower. But the key thing is, is that if it's too high, when you lift your head, you'll bang the back of your head against the valve and it's very uncomfortable. And if it's too low, then it'll be sagging and dragging you downward. You'll be very heavy on the bottom and that tank might actually slip out of the cam band out the bottom as well. So adjusting the height to where the top of the BCD and the top of the tank valve uh, are about the same height is usually a good standing point for you. Uh, and then what you can do is you can actually adjust that horse collar if your BCD has one. And that way it kind of always lets the BCD drop to that point and never any further than that. And that way it's always at the right height for you, which is what I've done with my jacket style BCD here. Once you get the right height, you just need to go ahead and clamp that cam band strap closed and you'll be all set and ready to go to move on to the next step. Now, if you do need to tighten up your strap at all or loosen it some, that's totally fine. You just wanna go ahead and loosen up just the last part of the buckle. You can then loosen the strap, tighten it up as much as you need to and pull it as tight as you possibly can. Then you're gonna go ahead and take that buckle and move it over about halfway to where it starts to add just a little bit of tension onto the strap to hold it in place. You'll thread that lead end of your cam band strap that you unhooked back through that last opening on the buckle itself. Then you're gonna pull, 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 pull and get nice leverage as much as you possibly can to snap that shut. And sometimes it helps to have a dive buddy help you with this just to get a little extra torque and leverage on that to snap that cam band shut. Uh, I'll have a separate video at some point here on threading a cam band because I know that's a common question as well. So you can look for that in the cards and the link down in the description as well. Now for the backplate and wing, it's gonna be pretty much the exact same process, though I will say that I've never seen a backplate and wing with the same horse collar type as a jacket style. They might exist, but I would say most of them don't have that, but many of them do have two cam bands instead. So rather than just a single cam band, there's two, and these can take some adjustments as well, whether it's again, loosening or tightening, getting the right height adjustment, etc. So for me personally, uh, when I loosen both cam bands, I'm able to get the perfect height for myself when the top cam band is right at the the neck that just starts to curve over at the top of the cylinder. So for you, it might be a little bit lower. You can't go too much higher than that curve spot there. So um, something to be aware of on your jacket if uh, you know it's not the right size backplate and wing for you, or you might need to adjust your cam bands. But for me, putting it right at the top of the cylinder, right when that curve is about to happen, that's the perfect height for me. And you'll again want to adjust that to where basically the tank valve is right about the top of your backplate and wing itself as a good starting point for you until you find exactly which height you need. Step four, attach the first stage. Now we're ready to attach our regulator. I'll go ahead and start with yoke as that seems to be the most common type that recreational divers use here in the United States. And then I'll cover the DIN regulator afterwards for you. First, you're gonna to wanna to loosen the yoke screw on the back of the first stage itself, and then remove that little dust cap that's in there that's helping to protect the internals of the first stage. Then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and place that first stage over the valve of your cylinder and start to tighten it down. And make sure that you remember that your regulator will go to the right-hand side. So all the hoses for your second stages should actually go to your right as you wear your BCD. The other way you can remember this is that the air coming out of the cylinder should go into the first stage rather than into the screw bolt that we just unscrewed. So as long as those are lined up, you can seat it in there, slide it over the tank, start tightening that uh, hand screw again, and you just wanna go finger tight. You don't need to crank that down or anything like that. And with that, our first stage is attached and we'll go ahead and move on to the DIN regulator. DIN is a little bit more common in Europe and other parts of the world, as well as for more technical divers and some advanced divers that have moved on to have a more low profile with a stronger connection by having a regulator that actually screws into the tank itself rather than clamping over the tank like the yoke regulator does. After removing the dust cap from the first stage of your regulator, you're gonna go ahead and make sure that the O-ring is in place, laying flat and flush properly like we talked about before, then line up those threads with the grooves inside the tank cylinder itself. Once those are lined up, you're gonna go ahead and screw that in, righty tidy, lefty loosey. And again, make sure that the hoses for your second stages are going to your right hand side as you wear the jacket itself or the back plated wing in this case. And then the air is gonna go into that regulator. So it can only go in one way for the screw. You don't have to worry about it being backwards potentially there. As long as it's right side up and the hoses are going to the right hand side because 
breathing through the right hand side is what we do with our second stages. Now, similar to a yoke regulator, you don't need to wrench this down or anything like that. You just wanna hand tighten it. And once it's snug, you're good to go. You don't need to crank it down or anything like that. Uh, and if anything, you will wish you hadn't when you try to take the regulator apart later, because sometimes those uh, threads can get a little tight and locked up on you depending on uh, what was going on inside the regulator itself during the dive. Step five, attach your low pressure inflator hose to your BCD. Now we're ready to attach our low pressure inflator connection or LPI to our inflator hose on the BCD itself and then the backplate and wing as well. Remember to pull back the coupling itself, push it into the connection, then release the coupling and then give a little tug on the hose itself, not on the coupling, but on the hose, just to make sure that that connection is secure. You should be able to just kind of pull it back, push it together, let go, and it should connect really easily for you uh, since nothing's under pressure just yet. Once you're connected, we're all good divers and we like to stay streamlined. So let's make sure that our LPI is streamlined over the left shoulder as well. And most BCDs and backplate and wings have either like a little piece of inner tube to route the hose through or some clips or something like that that you can route the hose into just to keep things neat and tidy for you. Step six, streamline your remaining hoses. So first with the Octo, make sure it's somewhere within the triangle of your body formed from your hips up to your neck, basically. So kind of that triangle there. You want to make sure that it's located somewhere within that position. And most people will go ahead and put it uh, up a shoulder strap or on an Octo Keeper itself. But whatever you use, make sure that it is tucked away and secure enough that it's not going to just dangle while you're diving, but it's not so secure that it becomes a problem in an out of air situation. You want to be able to donate to your buddy by just pulling quickly, donating that hose to them, and not having to mess with a bunch of different connectors and things like that. Your console or SPG should also be streamlined to you as well. And what I like to do is actually put a bolt snap on a split ring. And that way that split ring goes through the console or through my SPG. I have the bolt snap attached to it and I can just clip it off to a hip D ring. And that way it's out of my way and I can use my dive computer that has air integration, or I can just unclip and look at my SPG as needed uh, for an analog backup. Or if I forgot my computer for some reason, I have that analog back up there for me as well to take a look at. If you have more of a console that has like the full compass, depth gauge, SPG, or, or maybe a computer console, you may want that on a retractor because you're probably gonna be checking it a little bit more often. And that retractor allows you to pull it up and then when you let go of it, it'll just kind of retract back to your hip for you. And you can do the same thing I was talking about with a split ring attachment. Uh, for any of these things, I'll go ahead and have some links down below to some different options on Amazon that I've used, whether it's retractors, bolt snaps, split rings, uh, and even the Octo Keeper as well. Step seven, fully open the cylinder. Now it's time to fully open up that cylinder. But wait, if you're getting value out of this video, consider subscribing for more content like this. And if you leave a like and a comment down below telling me when your next dive is or what type of videos you wanna see again, that'll help me direct my content for you and lets me know what type of stuff you're looking for. All right, before we open up that cylinder, we wanna go ahead and take our SPG, unclip it from wherever we had it, and then turn the glass either away from us or put it up against the back of the BCD itself. The reason I do this is I was told a story when I got my open water certification about an older SPG where the glass blew out on it and uh, those shards of glass actually flew out and, and hit the diver that was opening their tank. Basically, it was one of those things where it's a story that I've heard. I've never seen this happen. I've never heard of anyone ever seeing this happen, but many people have actually heard this story before. So whether it's true or not, I don't know. But for me, I just like to turn that SPG either completely away from me and face it in a safe direction, or I put it against the back of the BCD itself. So it's back against that back plate or back against the, the inflation piece of the BCD. And then I go ahead and open up the valve and turn it on all the way. That way I just know just in case that glass isn't going to come flying anywhere. And for the cylinder itself, we do open that valve all the way. We don't just give it a couple cranks and then stop. We also don't open it all the way and then do a quarter turn back. If you were taught to do a quarter turn back, stop. It is not something that anyone does anymore. It's not taught anymore and it shouldn't be taught anymore. And if you were taught that, tell your instructor they're wrong or <laughs> tell them to watch this video or something. They can talk to me about it. Uh, but the quarter turn back method was an old outdated method that's no longer needed for uh, modern regulators and modern scuba tanks. Um, it is something that's actually dangerous in a way because if it is fully open, you are one, getting all the airflow to the regulator, which modern regulators are designed for. Two, fully open means that it can only go one direction if you need to close it. So if you have multiple tanks, say for side mount or something like that, you don't have to guess about which way to turn the valve itself. It's just already open. And three, if someone like a dive master is checking your tank before you get in the water, 
they can just check to see if it's turned fully or not. And they don't accidentally shut off your tank when they think they're opening your tank because they get confused because they're standing backwards or something like that. And they wind up closing your tank instead of opening it on you. So fully open that tank up all the way, no quarter turn back. And if you have any questions about that at all, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm happy to talk about it in a polite debate if need be. Step eight, check for leaks and check your SPG. Now that we're fully pressurized, we wanna listen for any leaks at all. If you turn on your cylinder and it instantly started hissing, crank that cylinder off, turn it off real quick, you probably either blew an O-ring or the O-ring just wasn't seated properly. So go ahead and purge the valves by pressing the purge button on your second stage once the cylinder is closed all the way. Uh, turn off that valve completely, press and hold the purge buttons, watch your SPG, that gauge will fall down to zero, that means your lines are clear. And then you're gonna wanna go ahead and unscrew the yoke valve or unscrew the DIN part of the regulator, remove it, Inspect the O-rings, make sure that they're in good shape, they're still there. Uh, usually, again, what will happen is that O-ring winds up blowing, it tears, it comes out, it rips or something like that. Replace the O-ring with your save a dive kit if need be, and then go ahead and reseat the regulator. If everything looks okay, it just might not have been lined up properly, so you can just kind of pull them out, kind of rub your finger on the O-ring, make sure it's in place and seated well, and then go ahead and reconnect the DIN or go ahead and put over that uh, A-frame of the yoke valve and go ahead and reconnect everything and try again. If you need to, again, go ahead and replace that O-ring for you. And I'll have a video down in the description as well as a, up in the cards there that tells you how to replace an O-ring on a cylinder as well as how to replace an O-ring on a DIN regulator. Now, if you didn't hear any leaks at all, go ahead and check your SPG and your air integrated computer if you have one to make sure that you have a full cylinder. For a standard full aluminum 80 or 11 liter tank, uh, you should have 3000 PSI or 200 bar, which is gonna be that full tank. And it might be plus or minus a little bit. This can change a little bit based on the temperature of the tank. If it's a little bit hotter because it's sitting out in the sun, it'll be a little bit higher pressure. And if it's a little bit cooler outside, then it might be a little bit lower pressure. And that fluctuation is normal, but should have right about 3000 PSI or 200 bar before your dive after you just set up your brand new tank with your gear. Now you wanna go ahead and inflate your BCD fully. So you should go ahead and hold that inflate button and let it fully fill up. And then you're actually gonna hear the overpressure valve release some gas and that's normal. That means that your overpressure valve is working properly and it should do so. When you let go of the inflator button, it should stop inflating. And when you go ahead and press the deflate button, it should go ahead and start deflating for you. If that inflator button is sticking, you'll learn by doing this step before you get in the water, which is very important because a rapid ascent can be a way to get yourself DCS or decompression sickness. Uh, as well as an air embolism or you know an issue by holding your your lungs basically uh, over expanding by holding your breath lastly as you start to deflate the bcd double check your dump valves as well just to make sure that they're not sticking and that air is able to escape from them easily for you as well step nine check your second stages now hang in there we're almost done and ready to go but now we want to go ahead and check our second stages to ensure they're functioning properly with our SPG in hand, we wanna go ahead and take three to four breaths off of each second stage. That's both our primary and our octo or secondary redundant backup if we're on a long hose setup. When we breathe in, we shouldn't see that SPG gauge drop suddenly and then start filling back up slowly. That means that something's either wrong with the SPG or the cylinder itself is not opened all the way. So double check that things are open all the way. And if you see that again, as you breathe in, the pressure drops and then slowly comes up, do not go on your dive, there's something wrong with your regulator or that SPG. Basically with each of these three to four breaths, we wanna make sure that that needle is staying exactly where it is because at the surface, three to four deep breaths like that aren't really gonna move that needle at all and we shouldn't see it change at all. But this just makes sure that our cylinder is on. We haven't turned it back off by accident because breathing three to four times would lower the pressure if the cylinder itself was actually turned off all the way. Uh, and then we also wanna go ahead and hit the purge button on each of them just to make sure we can purge our regulators properly. And again, just let some air flow through there. Make sure nothing's gonna happen like free flows or anything like that at the surface. Step 10, gear up or secure your gear properly. All right, we did it, we are ready to go. And if it's time to go diving, go ahead and gear up, check out all your buckles, make sure you do your pre-dive safety check with your buddy, ensure everything's ready to go and go ahead and hop into the water. Now, if it's not time to dive yet and you're on a boat, for example, make sure that your gear is tucked away tightly. You have all of your hoses and everything kind of tightened up into a nice little package. Uh, so you're not just spread out everywhere causing tripping hazards. And most boats have some type of bungee system or strap system to ensure that that cylinder stays in place. The last thing you wanna do is go over a couple little waves or a wake from another boat or something like that that rocks the boat and that cylinder falls 
breaking your first stage, sending that tank flying somewhere, or having that gear drop on someone's foot, probably breaking their toes or breaking their foot on them, uh, and just causing a bad day for everybody. So make sure you secure your gear properly on the boat. Now, if you're doing a shore dive or you're diving off the dock or something like that, make sure you go ahead and lay that cylinder down and have, again, all your hoses and gear kind of tightened up for you in a neat little package so you can just lay the cylinder on its side and you don't have hoses laying out there causing a tripping hazard for you. If you can, try to keep this in a more shady area and not in direct sunlight if it's gonna be a while, uh, but if it is gonna be a little bit of time, it, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. You might wanna just go ahead and turn the cylinder off, purge the lines, and make sure, of course, you turn that cylinder back on, double check your regulators and your SPG before you go ahead and get in the water during your pre-dive safety check. So as you can see, there are quite a few steps that are involved in gearing up properly and getting all your gear assembled and set up ready to go on your dive. But watching this video a time or two before you go out on your dive vacation or before you go to your next dive trip or even to your next class will be a great way to refresh yourself as a certified diver. And if you're a new diver or someone that's in training right now for open water certification, you can go ahead and check this video out and use it as a reference when you take your class. But remember, this is not a replacement for certification itself. Well, going on this dive is gonna be great, but what do I do after the dive? Well, I did mention this earlier, but in this video, I teach you everything you need to know about cleaning and maintaining your gear after you've been diving. Click or tap the screen now to check that out. And with that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving.